Hey, Kitty Girls, it's Sunday, July 11th, 2021, and welcome to Cubs Out Loud Drag Race All-Stars Season 6, Episode Number 4. You want to watch some halftime headliners, Hunty? Mm-hmm. Some of them, maybe. Not all of them. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Already it's starting. Thank you for joining us. For those of you that don't know, my name's Gary. With me is my ever-fabulous co-host. Hello, everyone. It's Damon. Welcome to the show. All right. So uh, we're going to jump right into it and uh, kind of talk about our thoughts for the show. And with that, let's get into our first segment. Racers, start your engines and may the best drag queen win. All right. So uh, put the pedal to the metal. These are our overall thoughts on the show the all-stars halftime headliner show mm -hmm. um <laughs> uh-oh i guess i just want to say this oh <laughs> when i started watching the episode uh i was like what what is this show what is what is this challenge i was like okay this is different. Mm hmm So, um, how do I put this? I'll go ahead and start with my, my thoughts. So I wrote down, is it bad? And there's a question mark. And there's a couple of things here. Because, mm -hmm. so this was the quintessential, like, um, celebrity, it's not quite Snatch Game, but it's the celebrity impersonation performing a song that's ru a rue song kind of challenge and and mm -hmm. in addition to that you only get so long um i think anywhere from 30 to 50 seconds to to like present like this song and your character and whoever you're portraying so i put down is it bad and and i'm gonna be a bit cunty and shady and i will own it um but i'm gonna say it is it bad that I didn't really recognize a lot of Rue's songs? Like, is it bad that the interpretations were pretty decent? Like, the singers were actually kind of good. Mm. Like, we've had them in years past where it's kind of like, oh, who are you? Um, right. <laughs> like, who are you trying to be? Right. But this one was one of the few where I was like, did, did, did World of Wonder drop the coin and have, like, the actual like people perform these songs. I doubt that seriously, but, but like it was getting mm -hmm. like, it was, these were really good vocal interpretations of the original performers. Right. So it was a very good like moment, but I hate to say it. A lot of that for me was muddied by I'm sitting there trying to understand which song they're singing. Mm -hmm. That's a Rue song. Um, some of them we know. I mean, Bring Back My Girls, um, uh, uh, I think someone's, no, no one did Adrenaline. Who was it? Oh, gosh. My head just left, a bunch of them left my head all of a sudden. That's why I apologize for that, y'all. But that was kind of my thing where, like, okay, I get what they're doing, but at the same time, I'm like, oh, I don't know if I like this. Like, I don't know if I like this. That's kind of my third, is it bad? All right. Because it was so short so sweet and and um there wasn't obviously because of covid they probably had a lot of restrictions on like the number of people performing with them mm. et cetera, et cetera. so i think in general they had like only two dancers right. at a time right so it kind of became this like somewhat decent but not really decent thing that with more people probably would have made the numbers a little bit better right i don't know so right that's me so yeah um <laughs> i guess my my i said what is with that production um I just, <laughs> so here's the thing, <laughs> like, it was really put together to be very professional, mm -hmm. 
as we can see, like right now, like the logo and like all the sponsorships, the fun, cheeky, like mm -hmm. let's talk about everything RuPaul's ever monetized, um, <laughs> you know, kind of stuff. So I appreciated that. And I appreciated that everybody was given somebody that was realistic. Mm -hmm. um, I still don't know if they were given these characters or if they picked them themselves. Mm -hmm. um, I know the storyline says that they picked them themselves. But like some of them are so spot on, it's really kind of ridiculous to me. Um, that's why I'm like, what is with that production? Plus, there's also some other things that are just kind of wonky about it. So, mm. yeah. Um, that being said, so, yeah, I, I just have so many questions and I can't really articulate them at the moment. Uh, yeah. Uh, and I'm, uh, there's, yeah. So for, for, for me, obviously, somebody had to pick somebody. Like either production picked it for the cast or the cast picked it themselves because they had to drop the coin to get the costume. Because right. these weren't just like something thrown together. Mm -hmm. These were actual, like, some of them pretty close to the original, like, look. Because if you, I think it's in, um, it's either in Untucked or in the Pit Stop, they go through them Mm -hmm. And you can see, like, here's Fergie's, and then here's Ginger as Fergie, and it's a right. pretty, like, dead-on comparison. So this wasn't like, here's a bunch of costumes over here, like, go grab something and put it together. This was obviously right. something that they had to right. get. I see. So yeah, that's where I'm confused because I'm like, okay, so did production make these outfits? Did the queens have to make these outfits? Were the queens told who they were going to impersonate? Like, I, there was just a lot of stuff about mm -hmm, it. And then mm -hmm. in Untucked, um, it was really intriguing to see that they had a mini challenge, but it never made it into the episode. Like, did I miss that? Well, because there's all this like sports stuff. And all the queens are sitting around eating chicken wings. Oh. And I noticed that they were all dressed and looking a particular way, like they had to be cheerleaders or something. So it makes me think there was a mini challenge, but it never aired. Like, hmm. because of the length of the edit, they just cut out the mini challenge altogether. Hmm. And skipped right over it. Because then it was interesting how they were talking about how Rue, like, when she gets titillated, like, she really gets going. And True. that, like, that whole thing. And I was just like, wow, this is a really, like, interesting behind the scenes moment, right? Like, you know, first of all, they fed the girls. And, like, you know, the girls just got to kiki and whatever. And I was like, how interesting. And actually, I would like that if that was to be the case for All Stars. Like, Sure, the regular season's a bit of a, a bit of a crog, you know, to get through. It's a real grind. And if you make it to All Stars, not that you get to be treated like a princess, but you know, you are like everybody's already familiar with each other. Mm -hmm. So things are a lot more comfortable, I guess. I don't know. Mm -hmm. So there was just a lot of things. Um, I there also a, go ahead. I will admit, I've when they showed that, and I'm like, okay, so what's going on? When did this happen? kind of thing because I wasn't sure like as you're looking at it like could it could could it sounded like it was last week meaning like last week's episode somewhere around that time kind of thing which wouldn't really make sense considering the food it was like chicken wings and it was it was it was like like um what are those called? When they're in the parking lot. Tailgate. Shit. Oh, right. Words. Hard. Drinking. Um, <laughs> like, it was a lot of tailgating food. And, right. and like, our, for lack of a better phrase, a certain football's competition at the ends, because they couldn't say what it really was, right. um, like, that kind of party that you would have friends over watching the game. Um. 
it seemed like that kind of thing. So chicken wings, potato chips, something like that. So yeah. it would it made sense for it to have happened this week. We know it's never it's not a week really, but right. Um, as opposed to like last week, unless they were preparing them for it. I don't, I will admit, I did not catch the, like the cheerleader outfits or anything along those lines, but I could have just honestly not really been paying attention because I'll be blunt. Like I, I was, I'm, it was late. I'm was pretty watching. sure there's a shot of Ginger and maybe one of Scarlet or somebody else. And they're in alternate outfits. Like, and it's, and, and it's because they went and ate chicken wings or something. Like there was something mm. about it that was... Mm off to me like i'm pretty sure if i remember unless i made it up my mind like ginger had like things under her eyes like mm. there was just this thing and i was kind of like okay something happened but obviously we're not privy to it we don't know what's going on and to me i was like i think there was a mini challenge and they just cut the whole thing out but maybe so that being said um so let's go through these uh so first up we get ginger Minja's fergie now i do want to say this um i watched uh bussy queen on mm -hmm. YouTube do a, uh, a recap. And I thought it was really interesting because Bussy is uh, one who actually, I think, showed the footage or made reference to actually watching the halftime uh. show footages of each of the queens and said, Ginger really nailed Fergie. Although we don't know yeah. what Fergie's thing is because Fergie doesn't quite have a thing. A thing. So, like, yeah. Like, um, yeah. And, and so for me, this performance was not up to par for energy. Like that was the first thing I thought of as Jamal had said to her, like you, like you really got to pow it like out the gate mm -hmm. and she didn't. And it was weird. Cause I was like, Ginger, what are you doing? Like, like where's the extra 10%? Like girl, I just need you to, to kind of bring it up a little yeah. bit. Yeah. It was very, um, I don't even, it was, it was, I, okay. I'll put it like this. I think she was trying to go comedy, but the comedy part didn't land because it wasn't really all there. Mm. Like the energy, like you said, the energy wasn't there. So it just kind of fell flat. Yeah. Um, and again, I don't, I don't, I don't see Fergie. Like that was my big thing. Like the hair is nice, but that looks like hair that any other queen could wear and be fine kind of right. thing. It doesn't really scream Fergie to me. But well, the and outfit's that's, very close. And that's another issue that I have with this whole challenge is, okay, so are they supposed to be drag versions of these? Or are they supposed to be, like, impersonators? Because there's a distinction for those in my mind. And I True. think Ginger's doing a drag version of Fergie. Because Fergie does not mm -hmm. have big-ass hair like this. Not at all. No. No. So, yeah. Yeah. So then we go from one big girl to the next big girl. And we get Eureka doing Madonna. Mm-hmm. I thought it was okay. Mm-hmm. Again, some, I had agreed. Some, yeah, I had some issues. Um, yeah. And this is one of my biggest pet peeves as an issue, and the judges never brought it up. Girl. Halfway through your number, your whole headdress and your wig are falling off. <laughs> you see that, David? <laughs> On the screen, I got it. I got it. I got it like circled because it, it irritated me when I saw it the first time. And there's two shots. This is, I think the first of the two where the camera's on her and I'm like, bitch, your head falling off. Mm. I, so I, I'm like, I did not see it. But and, I... and, and what bothers me is like, don't they normally give them an option? Like, don't they run things through twice? Possibly. So we know they run through the runway at least twice, if not three times. So I was like, I can't believe they every and maybe everybody only got one run through on this, which could kind of explain some things. <laughs> but anyways, so that was a little yeah. beef that I had. I was yeah, like, really, was, Eureka? Like, I didn't even I didn't even see it. But granted, I, I put down when she came on, I was like, Ugh. Cause it, it just it, it it's. It looks like what Madonna would wear, like our war, mm -hmm. but it doesn't scream like Madonna to me. It seems very, honestly, it seems very basic. It seems too basic for Madonna. Like, yes, you've got this very detailed, like somewhat detailed, um, kind of like Trojan gladiator thing on. And then the headdress does look nice, 
But other than that, it's really simple. Well, to be fair, from what I recall, this is pretty much almost exactly what Madonna wore, which is kind of Maybe. unfortunate. Because, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, next up, Miss Raja O'Hara as the boss herself, Miss Diana Ross. Um, I thought this was really, really good. But again, a little strange. Like, yeah. It, it, it was. It, it has to go with this whole, like, they're impersonating a person, mm-hmm. and the voice stuff was pretty good for all the tracks. Mm-hmm. And so, basically, the queens just had to, like, emote and lip sync. Mm-hmm. Like, they had to embody the character, but, like, there was nothing else to it. Yeah. Like, I... <clears throat> I was confused by this. Because okay. this didn't scream Diana Ross. And it wasn't until I saw the actual picture that they, you know, of the actual performance. I was like, oh, okay. Then that makes sense. Although I think she was still wearing a gown, not some leggings. But I could be wrong, you know. Um, um, but again, the colors are there. But I wasn't like, when I think of, of um, Diana Ross, I think of the big hair and like red. The big, like, mm-hmm. big, like, you know, duster jacket kind of thing and, and a short, no, a, not short, but like a close, tighter dress or maybe something big and flouncy. This was kind of a weird interpretation and the colors just seemed off for me. But now seeing, now that I saw the picture, either through Bussy or through, um, and one of the, one of the site, one of the things I, we saw the picture, right? It might have been Bussy. But in either case, um, I, you know, it was okay, but it just caught me off guard. And I agree, like, there was some weird interpretations of the choreography that I don't know if she got a, it right or wrong, because it, it felt kind of Diana, but not really Diana Ross. And it just, you know, she's, a, you know, if you're going with, like, Supreme's kind of performance, which I think what they were trying to go with, then yeah, that works. But this was meant to be Diana on her own. Yeah. So. Hmm. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not quite sure. Uh, next up, we have Yara as Shakira. Uh, so one of the criticisms I think that Bussy had made that I had to agree with, and I couldn't quite put my finger on it, was that actually Shakira wouldn't have worn pants. Mm-hmm. Um, so. Yeah. And, and what was weird to me is, like, so some of the queens get a stage, others get this riser area, and I mm-hmm. don't know if the queens were afraid of falling off or what the story was, but, like, any of the queens on the riser seemed to, like, be reluctant to fully use the space. Mm-hmm. So I, well, almost all of them. Yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, not all of them, but, yeah, like, it yeah. seemed to be a, a theme, so. Yeah. Um, I don't know. Again, this one was okay. Um, I will admit it looks a lot better from like the, you know, neck down. Um, um, I was not a fan of the pants. I liked, I liked the color and Mm -hmm. I liked the, like the dancing. She did really good with the dancing and the choreo maybe because, you know, we all, we all saw that shit that was going on. But, um, um, but again, she wasn't emoting. She was very barely saying the words um and uh, yeah yeah this, this outfit is just kind of eh for me well we'll get to well, i'm sure we'll circle back around on this one in a little bit later um scarlet envy as Katy perry i have to say she she did pretty well like like as a uh homage illusion whatever you want to say mm-hmm. like there are certain times where she kind of looked like it I still don't know how I feel about the shark thing. Um, <laughs> I didn't understand why she was running around wearing it in the workroom because I was like, is she really going to wear that in her number? Oh, yes. Yes, she is really going to wear that in the number. Yeah. I don't know if it was part. Again, I don't. Re- so this was one of the ones where the whole left shark thing, which, again, I still don't know because I didn't watch it. Um, I, I didn't watch the after show, the actual one, because oh. I barely watched sports ball. Um, so. Well, uh, yeah, so in in the actual halftime show, 
See, I don't think I even watched that one, but I heard all about it because it was uh, it was a meme sensation over it. Left Shark either was zoned out, wasn't paying attention, wasn't doing the routine. There was this whole thing like how how Left Shark was living their own fantasy during the number while Katie and everybody else apparently was doing one thing. It was anyway. So that's where that kind of like comes from or makes a reference. But yeah, even so, I agreed like. And notably, this becomes questionable because if you didn't see the halftime show, then these performances might not mean much to you. True. Uh, next up, so Kylie Sonique Love as uh, Steven Tyler from Aerosmith. Girl. <laughs> I I loved it. Mm-hmm. Um, but it was definitely a choice, and I, I'm again. This is one like you were talking about before. Like, did Kylie choose this, or did production choose this? Hmm. Um, because I'm very curious. Because as you know, I, I, yeah, it was definitely bussy. Now I'm kind of throwing it out. Um, this is not what Steven Tyler wore at all. When he did um, Correct. his Super Bowl halftime show, oops, sorry, oop. <laughs> anyway, um, but this is Steven Tyler, you know, the half open shirt, um, the frills on the microphone, right, the scarves, um, all that stuff, yeah, scarves, scarves and stuff, yeah. That's that was that's classic Steven Tyler. I liked it. I hate the hair. I'm sorry. This wig is one of the most atrocious wigs I've ever seen in my <laughs> goddamn life. It looks like roadkill on her head. I was like, what in the hell are you doing in that thing? I just, I was so confused. It's true. Otherwise, I thought it looked pretty good. And I thought it was interesting what she had to do with her chest. And she talks about it. I think it's on Tucked or whatever, where she mentioned that it's she had not... to tape her chest down underneath her armpits. Yeah. So that it wouldn't be like a part of, you know her look which i was i mean i thought that impressive because when i was watching i was like okay mm -hmm. very strategically placed top works very well mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so yeah uh next up jan as lady gaga <sighs> y'all okay so i'm gonna say like this mm -hmm. okay i saw it the first time I watched through it like when I watched the episode, the full episode on its own, you know, the whole thing. I was like, "What the fuck is going on? What is the? What is she doing? She seemed so frantic, so like frazzled. It seemed very much like um, her 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 rumorsal back in season eleven. Mm, okay, where the whole like or twelve, twelve, excuse me." Where the whole like ah all that shit like it seemed very much that, and I was a little concerned because it was a lot of lot of energy, mm -hmm. a lot of energy, and I was just like I didn't like it. Then I watched it again, mm -hmm. and prior to it, I had watched the um, Bussy Queen video mm -hmm. where he compared it. Mm -hmm. And he showed some of the actual video from that performance. Mm -hmm. Then it made sense. I got it. Right. And I was like, okay, kudos. Good job. There you go. Yeah. Now it makes sense. Again, I needed the context of the actual performance. And that's where I feel like this episode lacked. Unless you've watched all of these halftime shows... Maybe not, right. maybe not all of them, but most of them, you're not going to get the full effect. Because what it seems like to me is they took the literal halftime show performance of something, swirled it around into a Rue song, mm -hmm. and then pasted those two together and then gave it to the queen and been like, here, you're going to do this. Right. That's why, that's why I was saying, what is with that production? Because... It it I agree with what you just said. Like it feels like World of Wonder was like this is what we want to do. This is how we're going to do it. And I they may have given the queens a couple of options, um, mm -hmm. 
or ask the queens like if they were ever to do like a, an illusion of a celebrity who's done a halftime show maybe that was a piece of it i don't know mm-hmm. for me I, I i was i was thoroughly impressed with jan and i was like wow yeah. that was super super impressive like really really good yeah uh next up miss akira c davenport as prince so for me Uh-oh. it was it was it was a mix like there were moments where i really felt she was giving me prince and then there were but there were some moments where she wasn't so mm-hmm. and obviously showing off her ass <laughs> was definitely not yeah <laughs> like so i'm yeah I'm going to be – so Jim and I actually, during the show, we had to pause it um, because we had so much to say. <laughs> I'm not saying – I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a Prince fan, you know, and I've you know known Prince for many years – not known him, but, you know, I've, I've watched him for many years. So there are certain things about him that are easily – translated into a performance you know um we both agreed this was a little too much drag makeup for prince if that makes sense she had the the long eyelashes on um she kind of had like almost a a nudie lip kind of thing going and and she looked a little dragged up the Facial hair that she tried to put on, it was not enough. Mm-hmm. Or it either got lost, um, so she needed more. Right. Because that was sort of like what you get with Prince. You get like a a little glamour. I would see like some mascara, some some eyeliner, a little, you know, touches here and there, maybe some glitter, and then definitely like something here to give a beard, you know, facial hair kind of illusion because that was Prince. Um, this was another one that I needed the Bussy Queen to like get the the look. Obviously, Akira took her own interpretation because she wanted to show off the ass, which is fine because that's Prince. We we know that he's worn outfits with that similar cut before, so no big deal. But this just felt off. Mm. The heel might be a little too high. It's just there are just certain things that just felt. Mm. I would have liked an actual guitar that looks like a like a cardboard cutout prop kind of thing. I don't know if it's real. I can't tell. And um, it of the queens that were nervous about the choreo, she seemed the most nervous in the pre-show pre-stuff. Right. And I think those nerves kind of showed. Yeah. I also was not a big fan of this hair. The hair needed to be something. We needed to do something else. Something short pompadour or something this did not this is like like a woman with like a wrap on her head Hmm. yeah next up the surprise of the lineup (laughs) but not really a surprise so pandora box gets to bring back carol channing uh and I admit, I got learned. I did not know that Carol Channing was the very first Super Bowl halftime artist. Mm-hmm. I wasn't alive, I don't think. But I don't think I was either. But I was really I... super impressed. And honestly, this is probably one of my favorite of yes. all routines. Because <laughs> it was so surreal. Yes. I was like, I'm watching I... a drag queen do Carol Channing do the halftime show singing a RuPaul song. Yeah. In a Carol hey. Channing style. That's crazy. Yeah. And it, it's funny because it actually, I mean, I'll be blunt, it worked. Yeah. Everything fit. Like, it was funny. It was campy. It was cute. Pandora looks a lot like Carol Channing. Like, obviously not dead on. But it just worked really well. The Whoever chose this song with the click clack, click clack, like, genius. Because <laughs> it fucking work it was very much like a carol like carol channing like broadway like weird kooky performance and it just and again whoever whoever they got to like sing the song because obviously they couldn't get carol channing because um, right still just oh so so good yeah no, it was it was pretty good uh and then 
we end up with Finally. Queen Bee herself, Miss Trinity, as Beyonce. Girl. Bitch. <laughs> Don't fuck Man. with her. Don't fuck with her. No. Because she knows her shit. Shit. I... So this was one of the few things that I got spoiled on um, through Twitter before I got to watch the episode. Mm. Because Bianca Del Rio had posted um, uh, her, like it was a little meme, and it's her saying, okay, Beyonce, or something like that. And then you get Trinity as Beyonce in the, like, it's just the, like, her with the, like, with the microphone in front of her hair and her hair. And I'm just like, bitch. <laughs> and then you see the performance. Mm hmm. Yes, yeah. Queen. Yes, yeah. Queen. Brought the show to a good, good ending. Right. The The lineup was done very interesting, very well. Um, I'm kind of surprised in a way they didn't decide to go historical, which would have made Carol Channing first. Mm -hmm. And then Gaga, I don't know who Gaga might have been last, maybe. Gaga or Beyonce. Yeah. Might have been last. But anyways, so no, Tr Trinity really served. Um, the only thing for me about Trinity is I was like, girl, if you ate a couple cheeseburgers, like, you might have just a little bit more to you like Beyonce does because she's mm. so skinny. Yeah. Um, and that's that's not meant to be a criticism. It's just an observation. I'm like, because I really, really feel that, like, she serves. And that, mm -hmm. and that human hair wig, honey. She worked the shit out of that. Like it was she money, so did. money, money, well, money, well spent. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yes, queen. Work was, that shit. <laughs> it was definitely uh, really good in that case. So you ready to move on to our next category? Sure thing. Okay. All right, honeys, it's time to cruise the runway. So we're going to talk about the uh, looks that the queens had. The category slash theme was the frill of it all. Damn it. Can we play that, like, <laughs> that, that, that shade clip real quick? That, that, that. Which one? This the, one? The, that the, was a choice. No. <laughs> <laughs> the, uh, not that one. I mean, yes, but but not that one. Just the sound effect. The doo 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 oh. doo doo. The... Yeah, that one. Yeah. Okay. Mm. Go ahead. You. I think you have very brief thoughts. So. Mm. Let me get a sip of that wine before I could get into this. Um. I, I, just be blunt. This was a bad category. Mm. I did not like this. I mean, the the queens gave a good interpretation of what they thought it was. Mm. Um, and my main issue is most of the queens, I think, got the memo. And then there are a few kind of oddballs that either worked or didn't work. And I'm not quite sure how I feel about it. Um, Again, when you think of frills, I think of like excess and and fluffy and and billowy and and I think I got that in several of the queen's short you know interpretations of it. Mm -hmm. And and then some other ones I was kind of like, mm, 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 mm. and we'll we'll see that as we go through this. Yeah, I said lots of interpretations. Um, it really kind of surprised me as to how all over the place things yeah. were. Like, although there is, there are a couple that use a common material, and I'll discuss that more because I have some opinions about. Mm. So, uh, let's get into this. So, we're going to serve, swerve, or nerve these particular looks from the runway. Yeah. First up, Miss Ginger Minge, looking like uh, a. What do I want to say? Like a lavender raspberry sorbet, like 
like <laughs> chiffon girl. She turned the corner and came down and I was like, well, hello, Miss Southern Belle. Like, yeah. how, how could you not get the the story of, of what she was presenting? I, I just thought it was so beautiful. Yeah, so this is a serve for me. I yeah. really did like this. Um, I thought this was very well done. I thought it was a good interpretation of the, the challenge or the, the runway. Mm-hmm. Um, the hair looks good. The dress looks good. Yeah. She was really living in it because she wanted she had this character thing the whole time with the parasol and even mm-hmm. in Judge's lineup. She was constantly keeping her arms like in a certain position. Like she was doing a lot of like she was quite well aware of how she was composing and holding herself. I was it was really mm-hmm. impressed. So yeah, I, I considered it a serve. Uh next up, Eureka giving us like the Madonna cowgirl thing? Like, I wondered if that was, a like, a, an intentional tie-in, possibly, from her... Is it the music album? Is that the one? Yeah, yeah. Um, But so. that being said, it's a swerve. Like... Yeah. Solid. It's a solid swerve. I'm sorry, girl. Solid fucking swerve. That's a, that's I'm, a no? I'm, no. That's an N and an O. Mm-hmm. In case you can't spell, mm-hmm. that's a no. Mm-hmm. <laughs> This came out the off the run out the runway on, onto the runway, and I was like, "No, ma'am." I even wrote, <laughs> "Uh oh, no." I don't know if you can see it. <laughs> no, <laughs> no, because <laughs> I was very much like this. It it reminded me, like Jimmy even said, and I agreed. It reminded me of the ruching like pants legs that Ginger had on just last week. I know. They they don't flatter your frame. And this just doesn't look good. Yeah. Swing and a miss. Yeah, definitely. Next up, Miss Trinity K. Bonet. Sorry, Raja O'Hara. O'Hara. I don't know why I did that. <laughs> My bad. Totally called the wrong queen. And I'm looking right at her face. Anyways. um, Mm. So Miss Raja O'Hara comes out in this tulle gown, um, this soft blue, almost mint green number. She looks beautiful. Mm hmm. I give it I gave it a serve, but it's a light serve. And the main reason is she didn't need the sleeves. Oh, thank God. You and I are on the same page. I'm sorry. Bitch, she turned the corner, and I was like, what the fuck she got on her arms? I was like, no, 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 no. I wanted her to tear them off. I wanted her to literally pull them off while she was walking the runway and, like, throw them on the ground very gently, not dramatically, because I think that would have made this better. Yes. I, I love the look. And I love the, you know, the, like the, the hair and, the, you know, the kind of the purplish hair or platinum purplish hair anyway. Mm-hmm. Um, and then like the, the look of the dress, but the sleeves just caught me off guard and I don't understand, I didn't understand why they were on and it didn't make sense. And I get that maybe you wanted the front, like the extra like frills on it, mm-hmm. but you didn't need it. You got enough. I also have a, I also have a conspiracy theory. Mm. I don't think this is her dress. Mm. I think it's borrowed. Yeah. I don't know from who. I think she took it from somebody else just because the fit bothers me ever so slightly. It ever doesn't so, yeah. it doesn't seem to fit her. Like there's just something about it. I'm like, really? Everything else is so well done for you, and this one's a little off. So if you yeah. had it made then maybe the measurements were not right or something. I don't know. Mm. It's just, yeah, it's sus. So mm. I give it. I give it. I give it a life serve. Light serve. Up next, Yara Sophia. Nerve. How fucking dare you? <laughs> well, if there's anybody that's like crazy enough to wear whatever the fuck they want on the runway, <laughs> it's Yara. Because yes. This we have we have this whatever this is. Um, that that's 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 not frill. It's fringe. So maybe you got. I don't know. I don't know what's going on with this hair. I don't. I don't understand that. Doesn't really make sense. Um, 
while the, I like the color of the dress, it doesn't, this dress does not scream frill of it all to me. Yeah. If the topic, if the, if the category had been like friends or beads or extra, maybe. Yeah. Um, and again, we, we don't need all the, like the jewels. Yeah, but I, I mean, I we've already discussed it before. I'm I'm exhausted yeah. with discussing like how Yada needs to edit and she doesn't like to, and that's what she's known for. Whatever. So for me, it's a swerve. Like I don't I don't know if I feel nerve because it's a look, it's a presentation, it's an aesthetic. I don't like it. I'm not bothered by it. I I'm confused by it. But that's Yada so for me. So. Next up, Scarlet Envy. Sir? I was waiting for you to say, meh. Um, yeah. Well, because it, here's it, the thing. Like, I, I don't know how I feel about this. Yeah. Again, I don't like, I hate the sleeves. This mm -hmm. is the second. This is the second queen with this tool thing, and they got these tool sleeves, and I'm like, "What the fuck is going on?" Did you both? Both of you bitches go to the same designer. What's what's the story here? Um, Scarlet is loving hats this season. She's mm -hmm. like got this like you know thing hats on her hats. head. Yeah, mm -hmm. like um, yeah. I I'm not a fan of the color. What is the color, Damon? I'm so it's confused. It's kind of a tan. Like new, I think it's meant to be. I okay, let me put it like this I think it's meant to be like taupe, okay, or tan. But when you put it on the runway and put the lights on it, it mm -hmm. becomes very much like a pinky purple, right? Or a um, um, almost nude color, right? And it's to, to be blunt, I probably would have liked it if it had just been nude. It's It's a mess. With the lights yeah. on it, I don't care for it. Um, I guess that I guess that resolves it for me. It's a swerve. Sorry, Scarlett. Yeah. I just maybe if I saw it in person for like a meet and greet and we were standing yeah. side by side and the lighting was different, I might like it better. But it's just yeah, it's, it's a mess. Like I like the t the front. Like this is why I gave it a serve. I like the like hard edge of the like the jewels here. Not a fan of the lip. No, 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 no. Um, those rhinestones on your lips, which didn't look like rhinestones when you walked the runway. Um, it kind of looked like um, glitter because mm. it, it was, I don't know, maybe because we're too far apart, too far away. It looked like glitter to me until we got to Untucked or right. backstage. And Jim clocked it and I clocked it. It kind of doesn't look healthy. <laughs> right. Um, yeah. So, yeah. Next up, Kylie Sonique Love giving us cellophane jellyfish something <laughs> or other. Um, I give this a serve. I think it looks good on her. I like the flowy, fringy frills. I'll put it like that. Um, yeah, that's all. Uh-oh. I'm going to give it a swerve. Oh. I don't like the sleeves. I don't know what it is with this particular episode, but I am hating <laughs> sleeves on any of these queens because they're extra. They don't make sense. And I get that you're trying to give us more volume, more movement, more whatever. But with this outfit, I think it was unnecessary. And as you were talking, I was trying to figure out, like, what would I have done? I would have removed the sleeves and I would have changed the hair. I probably mm. would have turned the sleeves into a mohawk mm. to add some edge like mm -hmm. to make it glamorous yet edgy like because mm -hmm. to be honest like her mug is beat i think the earrings a little too big uh yes. and her chest looks fucking amazing so mm -hmm. you know her legs look great i mean it, it, and so it was just like i, I don't know i was like uh, i don't understand what's going on so yeah. that's, that's i sort. liked it Next up, Jan giving us uh, mm -hmm. saloon girl, Madam. 
Madam Can Can. Mm-hmm. Like, I was like, did she pull a character out of a video game? Like, mm-hmm. is this something from like Red Dead Redemption or some other <laughs> game? Like, where it's like in the West, and I could see like there being a saloon girl. And the reason I say that is because it is gorge. Mm-hmm. I love this look. Mm-hmm. It is, Agreed. It is It is a high serve. I can't call it nerve because there's nothing revolutionary about it, but yeah. it is exquisitely well done. And I appreciated Jan's voiceover when she said, I knew all these other queens were going to end up doing pastels. <laughs> and I was like, ooh. Yeah. She got a cape it is a, it's. It's a definite serve for me as well. Um, I love it. I agree with some of the judges with like the colors are a little different. And I don't know if I like it or love it because of that. Mm. Um, I think it's, again, I think it's just a good serve. It's a good serve um, because it's not something we would expect. Right. Um, But um, I think one of the critiques that Trixie made in Pit Stop is, a lot of the stuff, it appears to be that Jan is just wearing it. It doesn't really show us her. Um, and I kind of agree. If there was Anyway, it feels very much like, I don't want to say this is borrowed. I feel like she probably got this made. Mm-hmm. And I think she probably got it made for the sake of doing something different um, than what she's known for or doing something different because she knew that like all the other queens were going to be doing something the same, right. something fringy and bright and stuff. And so I get that. And that's kind of my like overall feeling about the whole thing is that it feels kind of like it should have been more Jan, but it's not really Jan, but it is Jan. Now, to be fair, (laughs) the one thing I want to give her props for is that it's not purple. Yeah. Like purple is her signature color and she wears it all the time and everything in some fashion. And mm-hmm. for once, she didn't do purple. So I appreciate this burgundy, blood red kind of, like, color as opposed to some type of, like, a purple. I mean, technically, this mm-hmm. is probably in a purple family, but it's not really purple. Purple. Because yeah. it's, not, it's not even eggplant. Like, it's it's much more red, definitely. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, Pandora box. <laughs> Girl, when RuPaul... Gave that little quip about writing a letter to daddy. Mm-hmm. I laughed. I was like, that, I laughed too. That was a really great spot on. But here's the thing it's a serve for me. Like, <laughs> I admit, like, I think Trixie had made a comment that she thought it was ugly, yet sort of glamorous. Like, it was so funny to me. I was like, I really like this look. Like, it's a look. It's an aesthetic. And it definitely screams, like, Shirley Temple era, mm. like, baby doll, like, yeah. this weird, like, throwback. And yet at the same time, it makes me think of, like, uh, she could easily be, like, a like a haunted ventriloquist <laughs> doll, like, Annabelle bullshit. Like, I mean, it's just so wild to me in this varying way and yes it's a, it's a bit much <laughs> yeah but i still call it so a <laughs> yeah i oh um it's a swerve for me okay um i just don't like it i just i don't know what it is <laughs> it just i don't know if it's the color palette if it's the look like the campiness of like the the letter to daddy i read the, yeah like that hilarious but that doesn't really show in the look. It just. <laughs> you know what I just realized? It makes me think of the Swiss Miss. Ah, yeah. It, it has it's like a, it has like a European like culture flair in some fashion. Yeah. And yet yeah. still sort of now contemporary. Anyway, so. Yeah. yeah. I don't think I think I would have liked this on. I don't I don't know. Maybe I would have liked it on someone else. I don't know. I don't. It just. Yeah. I'll just give it a swear. Okay. Uh, now correctly miss trinity k bonet uh her voiceover cracked me up she said she was serving overcooked salmon (laughs) um but i get it because she was talking about she was making reference to the color in a way um although technically this looks more like uncooked salmon if you know how salmon changes colors but it it gets lighter Mm -hmm, but anyways mm -hmm, mm -hmm. um (laughs) 
Okay, you want me to say it? Well, look, I'll you, say it. You say your thoughts. Mm-hmm. This is a swerve. I don't like this. Okay. It's fringy. It's frilly, yes, but not quite the frills that you would think. And I could, she could have done something a lot different with it. It's very much a pageant dress. Like, very much a pageant dress. Correct. And that's maybe where I'm... I would... I My, my swerve is like soft, like swerves, like just like a little eh, move out of the way, you know, <laughs> but it's just very, it just doesn't, it doesn't work for me. Um, okay. See, this is my thing is like, I kind of like it, but at the same time, I agree with you. Like this definitely said pageant to me. It made me think she already had this and she just happened to pull it to wear it. Cause she was like, Oh, mm -hmm frills got it already have an outfit for that you know i mean she she looks beautiful that's why i was so like uh, yeah i don't know how i want to call this one because it's a beautiful look it meets the the criteria and yet mm -hmm. it's Doesn't. i don't want to say basic or boring or bland i need something that that means all of that you know what i mean like mm -hmm. it's just mm -hmm. there yeah. so i guess it yeah. For me, I guess I'll call it a serve, but it's just there's nothing else, you know. Like a lob. Yeah. A gentle lob. Yeah. I think we've been saying that. Uh last but not least, and notably, these were done out of order because originally they were going in the order of how they were in the halftime show. And then I realized we will see why Akira was last. So this is Akira C. Davenport. Uh so she Mama, this is the first, this is the second, Bitch. and then we have the third. Just fucking, just ner, ner. Yeah. Ner. Yeah, it's definitely Gosh, ner, because she came to snatch. Like, yes, she was like, oh, y'all want frills? Got I'm going to give you I'm going to give you elegant. I'm going to give you uh, some fashion, but I'm going to give you an interpretation of botanicals. And mm -hmm. it's going to have different functioning like aspects to it. And gonna... it is slightly camp, like ever so camp. Um, and ever so sexy. Like, it's just all of these things yes. all at once. Yes. Like, I love this look. I love, 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 love it. Like, it's so well done. The whole blooming... Whew, about to lose my breath. Um, whole blooming flower just moment is just everything. And then, like, the peacock... Not really peacock feather, but, like, the like peacock bloom behind her as she walked down the runway. Mm -hmm. And then as she got to the end and just, like, let it drop, and then she had basically, like, a almost like a gown, but, mm -hmm. like, a good-ass train, like, yes, bitch, like, work that fucking shit. Like, it's so fucking beautiful. Yeah. So, mm. no, Akira, it was definitely nerve. Now, I will admit... It doesn't exactly scream frills. I mean, I think yeah. we're relying on all the feather, like that whole pink assembly, like to really mm -hmm. give us most yes. of the frills. I mean, technically, yes, the headdress, like the flower, um, you know, has frill mm -hmm. aspect to it. But uh, it's just it was so good. So good. In that case. So uh, that was all yeah. the runways. Mm hmm uh lo and behold um jan's the winner so mm. we end up with an assassin assassination talk about a surprise element mm -hmm. this when it gets revealed who the lip sync assassin is i was like a what uh-huh i was like mm -hmm. we called her back now that kind of shows my ignorance because I have not thought of Jessica Wilde in forever. Agreed. But all the girls seem to very well know who Jessica is and think highly of her and have a good opinion. And I was like, okay. 
duly mm-hmm. noted, like, obviously not on the West Coast. Haven't really recalled seeing her tour or anything, but apparently she's mm-hmm. booked and blessed and she, you know, is doing all right. Yeah. This was really good. This was a really good look. And I, again, I haven't seen her mm-hmm. in a while. Um, I'll own that. You know, she's one of those queens that you, I remembered her as soon as they said her name. Mm-hmm. It was like, oh, okay, yeah, I know her. I remember her, and I remember her from, I think it was the same season that Yara was on. Mm-hmm. Um, and just being like, oh, okay. No, she was she was season two. She was on the same season as Pandora. Right. Yeah, yeah. I, th- I was going to say, I don't think she was the exact same season, but we do find out that her and Yara are best friends. So, Yes. Yeah. So I thought it was very interesting. And of course, they're both wearing red. Um, Mm -hmm. Jan, there was a couple of things that I found interesting. One, I thought her outfit was understated. It's obviously like a dancey kind of outfit. Um, Mm -hmm. But her hair, so she's still wearing the Gaga like hair. And I was like, this is a song that really calls for a slightly longer hair. Because, like, when mm-hmm. you're moving around and you're really trying to, like, emphasize and do some hairography, you need more length. Mm-hmm. Which worked to Jessica's benefit. Um, and strangely, uh, you know, one of them, in my opinion, was really bringing the energy. And one of them was doing it. But like, yes. But, like, doing a very specific interpretation thing. Which even yes. Pandora made fun of, and I was like, "Yeah, well, I." Probably would make an interpretation of that. You should, uh, making fun of that, probably not so much Pandora, um, considering her um, number. But that's why I thought it was funny that Pandora was making that criticism <laughs> in confessional, because I was like, "Well, if anybody knows." Uh huh. It was, it was very. Uh, how do I put it? Okay, I'm going to call it. I'm going to call it. I'm just going to say it. I'm going to fucking call it. I think Jan threw it. Okay, see, I've been wondering. I've been wondering if other people feel that way. There's a part of me that kind of wonders if Jan held back a little bit. And that's because if y'all don't know, I suppose we should probably do this. Jan did not pick the same lipstick that the group did. And the reason why we know that is because Jessica wins and she ends up being the one that sends home one of the two bottom queens. Mm -hmm. And it's Yada. And I thought that Jan might have picked Yada, but apparently that is not the case. Mm. And so we're going to get a little drama next week Mm. because she picked a different queen. Well, the only other queen. Yes. (laughs) That's fair. That's right. (laughs) I forget the rules of this season. (laughs) So, yes, she she picked the other queen. And even though that queen had said at the beginning of this episode that she doesn't care about being voted on last week. Mm -hmm. I'm like, okay. (laughs) I'm just going to, I'm going to, I mean, just let's, let's call like it is. Yeah. Um, So the other bottom queen was Akira. Yeah. Who was just in the bottom last week. Mm -hmm. So last week she was in the bottom with three other queens. And ultimately, right. because of whatever they thought that they would, um, the two of them, like, Silky and her were like, they were the bottom two. And I think she's one of the ones that kind of said that. This week is a different story. Mm-hmm. This week she felt she did pretty decently and maybe got outshined. Um, and now she's in the bottom again. And if someone picked her, she might have some feelings. Actually, I'm pretty sure she's gonna have some feelings. Like I, I'm, I'd wanna, I wanna 
I want to make sure, but I feel like she probably is going to have some feelings. I think they're setting it up that we're I'm not we we you and I will not be surprised if Akiri has feelings next week, discovering that mm-hmm. Jan picked her lipstick. Yeah, especially now when you watch it and you hear Jan's voiceover and she talks about like doing what is it? She went with her head and not with her heart, or vice versa. Mm-hmm. But it didn't like make that. any sense to me when I figured out who she picked, and I was like, uh, okay, yeah. So that's also where there's a part of me that's like, I wonder if Jan held back a little bit. But then again, I'm like, maybe Jan's just not a big dancer. But that's not really true. If you saw her in in the Madonna Which was thing, choreographed. And again, still. But you, she got stuff. She gets it. She gets choreography maybe now. Maybe she's not a good dancer. Maybe she's a good, like, performer. Right, right, right. That's what I mean. Is like I don't mm. think she's a an impromptu like dancer. Like I'm trying to think of the because even her death drop was awkward. Like during the lip sync, mm-hmm, it mm-hmm, was this. Mm-hmm. It was that weird whip drop or whatever where they like swing their leg. Do you know what I'm talking about? Like. Yeah, yeah. And I'm just like, and it seemed strange. And I was like, okay. But then I thought, well, maybe she just doesn't do it very much or, you know, doesn't feel comfortable with I'm, 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 I, I would, I would, I want to go back to like season 12 and look at her um, lip sync again mm-hmm. to maybe see if there's anything I can compare it to. Cause that's really the only thing for us that we can really compare it to. Yeah. I mean, like, I just watched today a bunch of videos of Stephanie's Child, the the mm-hmm. singing group that she and Rosé and Lagoon, uh, Laguna are in. And they're really good, yeah. honestly. Um, they're a really good a cappella singing group. But I'm like, hmm, like, maybe, yeah. maybe you're, you know, more suited for that. I don't know. Difficult to say. <laughs> and it's so difficult because Jan, you know, she's she's kind of infectious and she wants it so badly. Um, I'm happy that she got a win. Yay. She got, you know, the five thousand dollars for winning. She did not get to win the lip sync. So now the twenty thousand rolls over to next week. We're thirty thousand. So honey, you know that like there's gonna be a little bit of drama about the lip sync next week because either somebody's getting thirty thousand or it's rolling over and it's gonna be four. Forty thousand. So, I mean, yeah. I'm gonna. I hope so. I mean, that sounds bad. I have a feeling someone's gonna win next week. Hmm. I kind of. I, I, I. I want someone not to win, but that's just because I, mean, I, I like the too. drama of it rolling over. <laughs> <laughs> I kind of do too. I kind of want no one to win, but I feel like it's gonna happen because this will be like that'll be the most, like someone would essentially get. I think, you know. Ever. No, I don't want to say ever. That's not true. Yeah. So you ready to move on to our last segment? Sure thing. All right. All right. So it's time for snaps and eye rolls, hits and misses, a.k.a. the high. And the lows of the episode. So, mm-hmm. David, who are you giving snaps to? So, my snaps are to Trinity Shining. Um, I will admit I have seen her performance several times in the um, um, halftime show because I really like it. Like, mm. I think it's just really well done. She captured the essence of Beyonce in a way that when she was on season. <laughs> Our season. Ooh, that left my head. Was six. eight or was six? Good God, words are hard. Um, six. Right. Okay. Violet. There we go. <laughs> I have to put it in my head again. Um, where um, you felt like, you know, you know, she talked about, oh, she's Beyonce. She loves Beyonce. Blah blah. No, 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 no. Like you didn't have it, you didn't have it then, but now you do. Right. And I was thoroughly impressed. And I think she did a really great job and truly like captured the essence. Mm -hmm. 
and it was just a great, just great number and great performance. And um, yeah, I was thoroughly entertained. I am. Um, so I'm giving snaps to the illusions worthy of dream girls. Oh, so what I mean by that is I really felt that the halftime show showed us um, some queens really delivering the essence of who they were portraying. Mm-hmm. Um, so Trinity, obviously for Beyonce, mm-hmm. um, technically Pandora box for Carol Channing. True. Uh, Jan as Lady Gaga. Mm-hmm. Um, Kylie as Stephen Tyler from Aerosmith. If she got better hair and like, yeah, worked yeah, on yeah. a little more. Um, Raja as Diana Ross. Like, I really felt like almost half of them, if I was to go see a Dream Girls review and they did mm. these performances, like, maybe not the last ones that I mentioned, but like definitely Trinity and Jan for mm-hmm. certain. I would like, I would be like, damn, like, that's really impressive. Mm-hmm. Really, really impressive. So, yeah, that's who I wanted to give snaps to. Now. <clears throat> Damon, who are you giving high rolls to? Not that I should have to ask. Um, F and Yara. Like, I, 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 again, I get that we're being fed this interpretation that she's kooky and maybe insane and all of this stuff. And she marches to the beat of her own drummer. We'll call it like that, you know, but. Reality is she was fighting with Jamal about choreography because she's like, this is what Shakira does. Um, Jamal's your choreographer. So maybe you should just listen to what he has to say. And then you can make your little quips and quibbles and do your own thing later. Like, I'm just going to be blunt. Like, during the choreography rehearsal where he's showing you what he wants you to do, maybe you should listen. Shut your mouth. Listen with your ears. Um... And then just the performance overall, like that was just not so great. Um, I thought it was cute. And again, if I had not real, like had not seen very clearly that you weren't doing everything, um, it might've been impressive enough to be like, oh, okay, pretty good. Um, You got the hips down, but that's really about it. Mm -hmm. Um, And finally, like, kind of like what I was talking about like the past couple of weeks with Silky. Like this felt like a piece that you're like, that's frills. Toss it into your bag. This didn't feel like you took any time to really think about it and just came up with something that worked and your thing about it, like gone with the wind and, and that stuff like that made no sense either. Like Mm. windmills and, and what have you No, that no, no, it, it didn't make sense. And it sounded to me like you're trying to make it make sense. You're trying to get it to fit into the mold of what you think it should have been. I just was not a fan of that. Pay attention to the challenge. Learn to edit. And yeah. Mm, yeah. And I'm not looking forward to seeing her come back. Mm. What about you? Well, I said, which is kind of related, I said queens phoning it in. Mm. I really feel that some of these queens are just doing it to do it, or they're taking it for granted. Like, been here, done that before, I know what I'm doing, blah, blah, blah. Like, they just need to execute. But there's a part of me that's like, yeah, but girl, you need to do it at a certain level. You need to not presume that you own the place and it's just guaranteed that you're going to be given the crown. Mm-hmm. Yara is one of them who mm-hmm. just felt like, you know, it was just bound to be hers. And I'm like, really? Because now you're gone and I don't expect you to win. Even I though mean, you might I didn't have a expect her to, to win. Out. Right. I still don't expect her to win. Well, and then another one of them, I hate to say it, is Eureka. I really feel like mm. she's just here for the paycheck, for the 
for the camera time to keep her name out there and all of that's relevant. But at the same time, I was like, I really don't think you're going to win at least Mm. not this week. Like, like you just see, like you're just here to do it. And that really kind of bothers me. Um, Pandora, I don't think she's phoning it in. I think she's being incredibly strategic. Mm. And because she even got kind of called out on it. Because I think Scarlet and Untucked or whatever said about how Pandora is being very quiet and observant and doesn't really say anything unless she has to. And I'm like, she's she's no fool. She's watched all these seasons and seen all the drama and everything that's happened. She's like, Mm -hmm. if I don't have to open my mouth, I'm not going to. I'm not giving the camera shit like to work with. Now, she gives us stuff in confessional, but I think she knows how to produce herself, like how to and the right time at the right place say Mm -hmm. certain things. I agree with that. I think Pandora is being very calculating. Um, Is she is she. Like, has she been doing super amazing, like, oh, my God, so so fantastic work? No, not really. Right. Um, This was one of the first times where she's kind of a spotlight that has really shined on her. And it just so happened to be something she's already done. Right. My my estimation right now is that she's going to go pretty far. Mm. Not not all the way to necessarily the end, but I see her making the second half for sure. um, Or the top half or whatever. Just because I think she's being very conscious of what she's doing and what's happening. And unless... Unless some of them step up things, I don't know what's going to happen. Like, I'm concerned for Akiria. Uh, I also think Scarlet is kind of, like, skating by weirdly. I mm. think Eureka is going to make it to the upper, like, to towards the end. And that annoys me because I don't know if that's right. Because mm. I really do feel like she's just kind of phoning it in at the moment. So. Anyway. I, Yeah. Yeah. Okay, I'm going to call some high key shade here. Um, I'm not liking her her boy makeup. Oh, Eureka's? Yeah, no. How she how she's how she's giving us face for for interview? Yeah. Yeah, not just interview. Like I think she puts on a full on face when she walks into that runway or walks into the workroom. Oh yeah yeah yeah. yeah. So yeah, I, let's, I don't. So let's talk a little bit about that because re- if you remember in the entourage chat. I called shenanigans and said there's something going on with, like, the time and stuff. Mm. So there's one of two things that are happening, and I don't know quite what it is yet. And it, it, I've been paying attention, and I didn't call it until now in episode four. Trinity K. Bonet has had facial hair in confessionals, I think, in every single episode. And Akiria notably had facial hair in this particular episode, if not all the episodes. And Mm -hmm. I was like, now how are we having facial hair for confessionals and yet you are clean shaven for the runway? Mm -hmm. Like for when you're doing drag. So Mm -hmm. I have two theories. My first theory was the shenanigan was that production had them all come back and do confessionals after the entire season was done. Mm -hmm. So that gave them time to grow facial hair. And here's part of why I'm calling shenanigans on it. And I realize I'm stepping out of my lane, but these are queens of color. And I don't know if they can grow facial hair that fast. So there's that. Now let me give my second theory. Mm -hmm. This this one is probably more likely. They are putting prosthetic facial hair on for their boy look. Hmm. And here's why I think there's more validity that because there's even a joke made, I think, in Untucked about or no, maybe it is an Untucked where someone says something about putting pubes on their face. <laughs> like there's a, that was like, oh, mm-hmm. like while the girls were putting their putting their face on in front of the mirrors, there was some reference or whatever. And mm-hmm. I was like, mm-hmm. oh, mm. so now I don't know what the story is there. <laughs> If the okay. queens are are making are producing themselves for boy looks, and maybe both are true, maybe they did Our record professional looks, right? So maybe they did, uh, 
Right. Maybe they did all the confessionals at one time. Mm-hmm. And at the same time, the, the queens also manufactured their confessional look. Like, we're very conscious of how they wanted to appear. Um, although, I'm kind of hedging on that a little bit because Trinity's right. acne or her bumps seem to change. Mm-hmm. Like, between the episodes and even, I think, from confessional to confessional. I don't know for certain because I'm not... I'm not sleuthing it that hard, but I noticed like in the first episode or, d- or so, I was like, girl, like even Pandora, the bags under her eyes. I was like, honey, you look horrible. Like, e- like what is going on with you? Why do you have such bad bags under your eyes? It was the very first episode. And it's gotten better since then. And it made me think like maybe she was spending a lot of sleepless nights, like getting ready for all stars with mm-hmm. outfits or something. And that's kind of where that came from. Because I've noticed that, like, she looks better. And even in this episode, she looked pretty good on the runway. But then, like, in Untucked, like, it was a little different. So it made me wonder if production's fucking Mm. around, like, with the imaging. Mm. I just don't know. So, Mm. yeah, there's so there's some some time stuff going on. I don't quite know what it is. And my first thought was. How is it that Trinity and Akira have like male presenting faces with with chin facial hair and yet they're doing all these feminine looks like and they look shaved. So, yeah. And I'm trying to look I'm trying to figure this out. And I'll, I'll put it like this. I know some, you know, people, particularly people of color, can sometimes take a long time to grow hair. And there are some that grow hair, you know, like very quickly. Um, perfect example, Rosé, um, um, and, and a few others, but like in particular, like just, but you know, as someone who is melanin (laughs) gifted, um, I, you know, this is as my, my facial hair, I don't cut like ever, um, unless I'm ever doing a show and then I'll, I'll cut it all off or at some point this will get to be too much. It's kind of already there a little bit and I'll have to trim it because it's just becoming too, too much. Mm -hmm. (sighs) The problem I foresee or I think could be a case. It's a potential case of the whole, like if you know, like if you keep cutting your hair, it'll start growing faster because it just wants to be there. So it's possible, but it might be what you're saying might be true. Not just for like melanin and gifted, like Trinity and whatever, but I think just for anyone Mm -hmm. who is presenting facial hair in the confessionals and what have you, like it's possible that it was quickly, um, you know, quickly grown, but it's also possible that it's either put there or it's been a while. Yeah. I don't know. So anyways, we'll, we'll, we'll see how that plays Mm -hmm. out. That's kind of more of an, of an aside. It's not something specific, but I'm just like, "Mm, okay, we'll, we'll see how things play out. Like, yeah, it's long actually for me anyway. (laughs) (laughs) All right. So with that, uh, that's episode four of All Stars 6. If you have thoughts that you want to share with us, there's several ways you can do that. You can go to CubsOutLoud.com. You could send us an email at CubsOutLoud at gmail.com. You could also leave us a voicemail message. You can call 361-COL-TALK. That's 361-265-8255. You can find us pretty much on uh, most main social media outlets, uh, Facebook, Twitter, YouTube. We can just type in Cubs Out Loud as one word. Uh, if you want to join the chat, On Telegram, you can go to tinyurl.com forward slash Telegram. That's T-E-L-E-G-R-A-M hyphen C-O-L-D-R. If you want to know about the regular uh, COL series, when we're going to be recording those shows and going live on YouTube, you can go to tinyurl.com forward slash calendar hyphen C-O-L. If you would like to support Cubs Out Loud, uh, there are a couple of ways you could do that. The first of which is you can go get some merch at Zazzle.com slash Cubs Out Loud, where we have both regular and uh, the CML Drag Race items. So, for example, Damon is wearing our Consent is My Four Play series shirt. This happens to be the Bear Pride one. 
Um, so it has the Bear Pride colors in it, a little paw print, and it's a lovely forest green color. I happen to be wearing the uh, drag uh, pride version of Consent is My Foreplay. So it has the colors with the crown, um, same kind of concept uh, for that on a navy blue. But then we also have other items such as <laughs> our uh, our mugs. So uh, mine happens to be the, uh, I don't know what we call this, like semi-transparent. Frosted. Frosted, that's what it is. Um, Frosted. Mug. Uh, with a COL Drag Race logo on it. Damon happens to have one that's called the Two-Tone. So his mug has the pink handle with a matching pink interior. But his comes in a variety of colors. Uh, I think it's pink, gray, blue. I think there's maybe another color. I can't quite. Maybe there's a black. Black. Um, yeah. So anyways, these are available. Uh, there's other COL Drag Race logo items that are there. So that's one way you can support us. You can also uh, go to patreon.com slash comes out loud and become a patron for as little as a dollar a month. You get full episodes, would include the pre-shows and the post-shows of the regular and uh, the COL Drag Race series. And there's some other uh, items, levels to choose from if you want. And Or if you just want to leave us a tip. We will gladly take your money, honey. You can go to paypal.me slash Cubs Out Loud and send us a one-time donation towards the cost of uh, the podcast. We would greatly appreciate it. If you would like to promote Cubs Out Loud, you can uh, rate us through Apple Podcasts, uh, formerly iTunes, and you can subscribe through Google Play uh, or any place that uh, you you know, whatever app you use to listen to podcasts. Or you can Spotify. actually listen and watch the episodes on our Cubs Out Loud uh, dot com blog website uh, each episode is loaded there it has both the youtube video version and an audio uh, so if you want to do that instead of downloading you could do that as well damon where would they find you if they wanted to get in touch with you if you wish to get in touch with me you can find me as theater cub 79 on most bear related sites are on facebook or you can find me as pup underscore umbra on twitter the twitter is definitely not safe for work mm -hmm. If you would like to get in touch with me, you can find me pretty much uh, anywhere online as Gabriel73. When it comes to drag, I do have a, a Twitter account. It's Gabriel73DRAG. And with that, uh, we're going to say goodbye. And uh, we'll talk to you in another week for episode number five. Bye, lovely. Bye, girl. <laughs> you tell I didn't really cry any tears over that. Mm. That's fine. Just saying. It may look like my eyes are watering, but actually they're just itchy. <laughs> 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 <laughs>